As Cuba enters the fifth year of Fidel Castro's rule, that island nation is a land of uncertainty and quiet desperation. The waterfront is crowded with crated Russian farm equipment, symbolic of the ties between the two countries. These pictures were made by an American cameraman on assignment from Universal Newsreel and are by no means to be considered a comprehensive record. He was allowed to photograph only what authorities felt would reflect honor on Cuba. They wanted him to focus only on what propaganda pamphlets glorified. Silent factories don't reflect the claimed prosperity, and automobile traffic is but a fraction of what it once was. Government vehicles are plentiful. Castro's regime aims to indoctrinate the young in the ways of communism. Sneaker-clad children, shoes are disappearing, are taught Russian as part of their regular classes. Social life in Havana, once a noisy effervescent tradition, is now subdued. Military uniforms on teenagers are a sign of the times. Regimentation casts a dark shadow in the night. The militia guards department stores from saboteurs, and the goods displayed are but a token of consumer goods that don't exist. Communism has not bred prosperity for the masses in Castro's Cuba. Cuba's economy is having a hard time keeping afloat, but ransom goods from the United States, mainly drugs and essential foods for invalids and babies, help alleviate some misery. The freighter Shirley Likes unloads 7,000 tons of such goods in Havana, another installment on the $53 million paid for the release of Cuban war prisoners. The freighter prepares to return to the United States with an even more precious cargo, more than a 1,000 relatives of those war prisoners who have been granted refuge in the U.S. They, too, pay a heavy price. Before they can leave, they have to surrender homes, cars, and jewelry. Castro allows them to take only a change of clothing as they bid their homeland farewell. Fourteen of the refugees are stretcher cases, but they let nothing stay their flight. They face a rough trip to Florida. The ship is riding high in the water, but freedom is worth the price. They were unable to stay on deck to bid their homeland farewell. Authorities feared that there would be dangerous overcrowding at the rails. It is a scene of quiet courage. People who face an uncertain future, sure of but one thing, freedom. Sweet Land of Liberty is a welcome sight to the refugees who spent a dozen uncomfortable hours as the freighter battled eight-foot waves. Many have waited for years for just this moment. Their landing in Port Everglades is fraught with emotion. The end of a Latter-day Saga, the beginning of a new life. The refugees brought with them tales of terror, stories that gushed forth now that they had arrived in the land of free speech. Stories of life in their homeland, a homeland they have renounced until freedom lives there once again. Mm -hmm.